Syllabus writing is an important task in the learning outcome based curriculum design. You can say proudly that I am a syllabus writer. Many of us just copy the content of the book as a syllabus. That was good for a content based curriculum design. But writing syllabus for a learning outcome based curriculum framework is entirely different. That may be new to many of us. So let us see today how to write a good syllabus in an innovative way. First, we must understand what is a syllabus. Syllabus is nothing but a contract or an agreement or a promissory note between a teacher and a learner. If we want to construct a good house, the main thing is arranging a good contractor to do it. First, you will enter into an agreement. The materials to be used, the techniques, the procedures to be followed and at the end the building must have a list of qualities and facilities. So the document must have all these things. The house owner can see or experience the quality and facilities at the end. Here in a syllabus making the teachers are like the contractors. Students are the house owners. The agreement or the promissory note is the syllabus. Like a contractor in the construction, teachers are wholly responsible for writing a quality syllabus. Let us see what are the important components in a syllabus writing. In syllabus writing, we have three important components. The first one is the outcomes. We are already familiar with the outcomes. Outcomes are the statements describing the expected knowledge, skills and attitude at the end. The second important component is the contents of the syllabus. Content is nothing but the topics to fulfill or attain the expected outcomes described earlier. The third one is the responsibilities of the stakeholders. That involves the policies, the learning resources, transactional hours, trans teaching learning methods, learning activities and the assessment rubrics. So outcomes, contents and responsibilities all they form a syllabus. So in a syllabus, we must have these three components. Let us see something about the outcomes first. So before writing a syllabus, we must understand this template. The first is very important, the course title. Let me take a physics course, electricity and magnetism. Then you have to describe the type of the course. The course may be either a theory or practical or project or theory plus practical or theory plus tutorial or theory plus project. You can choose any one of that. The next important thing is the total hours allotted and the hours per week. So let us say it's six hours per week. So the credit allotted for the course is six. So electricity magnetism is a theory and practical. Almost all the science courses, the theory must accompany practicals also. If it is an arts and humanities, the theory plus tutorials will be a good. So the next thing is the password policy. The minimum contact hours required is 50. The total score for internal assessment is 50, external assessment is also 50. The minimum pass percentage is 50. There is no minimum pass percentage for internal assessment. And finally, who is the course creator? The name, affiliation and phone and email ID must be specified. This is very important because career appraisal, there is 
important weightage for course creators the next thing is expert there must be at least two experts for a particular course maybe internal or external experts can be availed this is the first part of the syllabus in the second part we have to write the outcomes let me specify the brief idea of programs specific outcomes say bsc physics is our program so this is the format you have to write the psos first you have to give a pso number then the second is the description upon completion of bsc physics degree program the students will be able to the remaining part you have to fill the third one is the mapping part this pso must have a proper mapping with the predefined pos program outcomes and also what percentage how far it is linked or mapped with the pos that you have to specify let us see one one by one say one the student will be able to acquire fundamental understanding of the laws and theories of physics this the pso is mapped with the po1 with 100 percentage mapping number 2 the students will be able to apply physics laws and theories in real systems this pso is mapped with the po2 it is mapped nearly 90 percentage similarly you can have any number of psos better you may have 5 to 10 psos for a good course now let us see the course outcomes this is the outcomes for a particular course i take a course electricity and magnetism in physics the format will be having four columns the first one is the course outcome number the second is a description upon completion of this course the students will be able to the remaining part of the sentence will be in the next row the third column is the pso in the previous slide we saw so many psos we have to map all the course outcomes with at least one psos and the level of mapping the percentage of mapping also to be specified the last one is the cognitive level of the learning you may aware that the bloom's taxonomy where we have six cognitive levels we have six levels in the last three analyze evaluate and create good for higher education the first course outcome is the students will be able to apply coulomb's law to systems of point line surface and volume distributions of charges this outcome is mapped with the two psos the first one 50% the second one also 50% the first one level is understanding the second one the level is apply similarly the second outcome is missing the third outcome is apply gauss law of electrostatics to solve a variety of problems this also has two mappings the two 30 percentage and the six pso with 100 percentage with apply and evaluate the fourth we have another outcome is mapped with three psos the percentage of mapping also specified so we have such six course outcomes for the course electricity and magnetism now the course outcome is ready now let us pass on to the writing of syllabus the syllabus writing may be in a table form the first column is the module and sub module if any and the second column course description the third one is the day we will have 90 days in a semester in which day we will handle the particular content and hours how much time will be to be invested or spent to learn this content the course outcome for which this particular content is to be mapped and what percentage of mapping then the teaching learning methods then students activity upon completion of the particular content the last column is the reference this is the first module electric field and electric potential this is a module name this may have several sub modules say 1.1 1.1 is the first sub module of module 
electric field electric field lines and electric flux this will be handled the first day it will take one hour the course outcome is one only 10 percentage of the outcome is linked or mapped the next column is teaching learning method is a lecture method we follow we have to follow so many methods so the recent ugc document on Learning Outcome Based Curriculum Framework number 2758387 page number 12 says that you have to follow a variety of delivery methods. So this is very important. There are a lot of delivery methods available. You have to choose appropriate teaching learning method for a particular content. I specify some teaching learning methods. LEC means lecture. Then think pair share method, brainstorming method, group discussion method, case study method, role play method, field work simulation and so on. And after completion of the class, the students must exhibit or demonstrate some activity, maybe quiz or assignment or seminar, multiple choice type questions, essay, problem type or micro projects in any form the student has to demonstrate the learning activity that you have to specify the last one is very important reference you must have proper integrity of reference in each and every content of the syllabus normally reference must have six parts the title of the book or this year the press and the place of publication we can have any number of modules the important thing is you have to extend the syllabus to 90 hours if you add these columns you must have 90 hours of the 90 hours there may be some 15 hours for assessment and the remaining hours proper contents or weightage for this course this is the day order the first second and third day second day and third day the second module is sub module is taken and followed by the teaching learning method the activity and the reference and you go on writing the syllabus like this till the hours at least 70 or 75 hours for a course so this weightage is very very important and also you have to distribute the day also within the 90 days in between 90 days you can have assessment also so that you have to tally in the syllabus so this is the innovative way of writing the syllabus. If you write this syllabus like this, you can measure the attainment of the outcomes at the end. Every submodule is linked with the course outcome and the course outcome is linked with the program specific outcomes and the program specific outcomes are linked with the program outcome. So the attainment of PSO, PO, CO, can be easily made using computer softwares at the end of the semester. Thank you very much for watching this video.